California. The lengthy peninsula at the southern end of California is the western border of the Golfo California, part of Mexico, bigger than Italy and twice as long as Florida. The main road, Mex 1, winds its way from the Pacific to the Gulf. This is a truly remarkable and fascinating region. A few drops of rain are enough to make the soil explode with life. The land is a huge undulating ocean of green palm trees and fruit-bearing cacti. Spanish history is everywhere. 96% of the country's inhabitants are Roman Catholic. Religion is intermixed with heathen ideas and customs. John Steinbeck visited the Bahar of 1940 and wrote in his logbook of life, the air alone is wonderful and reality changes from one moment to the next. The entire region is like a dreamland. Five million years ago, the Baja California began to separate at the San Andreas Fault and created a mountain range. Time zones divide the island into north and south. The division is located at Guerrero Negro. The south is one hour later than the north. The long and narrow peninsula encompasses an almost totally isolated area of 140,000 square kilometers. The island is 1,300 kilometers long and its average width measures 100 kilometers. Remote haciendas interrupt the savanna-like landscape. The estates are usually so vast that it's necessary to travel across them by motor vehicle. On the journey through the Baja, the small village of Santa Rosalia serves as a rest station. At the end of the 19th century, German industrialists created this village. It was previously in the hands of the French. Mainly Chinese and workers from India were employed here. This locomotive is a reminder of the time when it traveled between the copper mines and the harbor. Today, the mines have fallen into disrepair. Now there are just a few rusty old remnants of the copper mining that was undertaken here. As fortunes were made, various towns proliferated. Hoping to make it rich, thousands of adventurers came here to try their luck. Most of them ended up working in the mines for little money.
With a population of 15,000, the wooden houses and pavements are certainly not typical of a Mexican village. The village owes its appearance to the time when it was occupied by the French. The Iglesia de Santa Barbara is constructed of cast iron and was designed by Gustave Eiffel. It was first exhibited in Paris and in 1895 brought to Baja, California. The harbour was originally created for the shipping of copper. From the mines there were direct connections to the ships. Today the harbour is the starting point of fishing trips. The former capital, Loreto, was the region's religious and political centre. The main residence of the Jesuit mission was subsequently acquired from the Franciscans. Little remains of this once industrial area. There's an oasis of calm in the nearby gardens. Two and a half thousand species of plant, many of which originated in prehistoric times, point towards the sky. In the dry highlands, thorn savannas and countless cacti dominate the scene. In the huge cactus garden that is Mexico, there are 120 different varieties. Of these, only 50 are to be found in Mexico. The cactus plant has adjusted perfectly to Mexico's harsh climate. Prior to the continental drift, this area was tropical. Dinosaurs and mammoths roamed the land. Even though the terrain here is rugged, there's an abundant variety of both flora and fauna. There's little opportunity here for refreshment. There are only a few bars and restaurants, and when traveling long distances, it's best to take a good supply of water and petrol. Mexican fishermen are used to rich rewards. The waters here contain a wealth of sea life with more than 800 types of fish and twice as many crustacea. The sandy beaches are scattered with shells and provide a wonderful choice for collectors. An expedition into the lagoons reveals the most unusual forms and colors. Organized tours are also available. Whales particularly favor this region due to its warm, salty water. Two or three motorboats, each with up to eight passengers, travel to the area in which the whales can be found. In order not to frighten them, total silence is necessary. Whales can be observed at close quarters. They often approach the silent boats in the lagoon and come to within a few meters.
The 15 metre long and 30 tonne grey and humpback whales are accompanied by several seabirds. Gigantic cloud formations are in stark contrast to the abundant vegetation. The pure fresh air makes it easy to discern the sharp contours of the landscape. Religious belief is an important element in the life of the Mexicans. The country celebrates many religious festivals. During the processions, there is much music and dancing. In 1728, San Ignacio was founded by the Jesuits and named after the founder of the order. It was a splendid example of colonial architecture. Octavio Paz once said, Death is always with us during our fiestas and within our thoughts. Death and dying are thoughts that are ever present. Bananas and cacti are vital elements in the country's agriculture. The juicy fruit of the cactus is used in the manufacture of sweets. The plant is frequently used for fencing. As any uninvited guest is given a very prickly reception. The abundant splendor of the blossoms is quite amazing. The glorious hues range from pink to red. The Golfo de California's other border is situated in the region of the Sierra Madre Occidental, Mexico's rugged mountain area. The adventurer's journey through the famous Barranca del Cobre, the Copper Canyon, begins at sunrise. After many decades in construction, this railroad was completed in 1961. It has 73 tunnels and 28 large bridges. Corn is an important agricultural product in this region. Corn seeds have even been discovered in archaeological excavations. Some have been found to be more than 12,000 years old. In the barren savanna, there are few isolated haciendas. This land that has clearly been ignored by the rain god. The Spaniards referred to it as the hot oven. The Copper Canyon train makes its first stop. The passengers wait impatiently, but now it's possible to take a short stroll. Mexicans are expert salesmen. They sell provisions and souvenirs. With great skill, they convince would-be purchasers of the quality and necessity of the products. Two-thirds of the land is mountain area and reaches a height of between 1,000 and 6,000 meters above sea level. The Tarahumara Indians pitch their camp here during the winter months.
The Barranca del Cobre is four times larger and 90 meters deeper than the Grand Canyon. Powerful torrents of water created the region's deep canyons. The igneous stones were subjected to powerful erosion and bizarre rock formations developed. The six main canyons are up to two and a half thousand meters deep. The canyon, and indeed the entire region, derived their names from the copper-rich content of the terrain. Missionaries and miners were the first white people to settle in this mountain area. Fresh fruit, coffee and tacos are part of the staple diet. A fascinating array of carvings, woven objects and pottery make popular gifts for those at home. There's a cooling breeze on the edge of the canyon. But during the summer months, it pays to be cautious, as the temperature at the bottom of the canyon can reach up to 45 degrees Celsius. The most beautiful railroad in Mexico stretches for an incredible 950 kilometers. With their traditions and customs, Mexico's original inhabitants gave their land a unique degree of flair, as can be seen by the colorful clothing worn by the local people. The tortilla is Mexico's favorite food. Conveniently, their bread, plate and spoon, a satisfying main course and a versatile snack. The journey continues. The downward view is quite disorientating. The train puffs and wheezes across the rocky landscape. Forests abound in the higher regions. The tree line is located at approximately 3,900 meters above sea level. Here there are 200 varieties of oak and 40 varieties of pine tree. The Lago Arareco contains crystal clear water that is alive with fish. This area is very popular with campers who are allowed to pitch their tents wherever they wish. Each section of this fertile land is used as pasture. On the steep and lush meadows between rocks and trees, there are herds of cows and pigs. Only a few large rivers flow through Mexico, most of its watercourses being quite small in comparison. But they are of vital importance to both man and beast. Here, the clothes are washed in true time-honored fashion. No need to worry about the reliability of the washing machine here. The cold river water is more reliable than any modern appliance. At a height of 35 meters, the Cusareri waterfall is an impressive sight. 
its magnificent crystal clear water plunges down the rocks into the deep abyss below. This part of Mexico that is located on the Tropic of Cancer divides the country into two climatic zones of the same size, temperate and tropical. Its collection of rock formations is known as Mushroom Valley. With a little imagination, it's easy to recognize various forms, such as this large elephant. For Europeans, the extreme variations of temperature on the highlands poses quite a challenge. There are large differences between night and day, and the weather is good almost all the time. The landscape reflects in the water. The contrast with the sky is overwhelming. The sun shines brightly, and there's not a single cloud in sight. This region's forests were once subjected to years of destruction due to the production of charcoal. However, today, the forests cover the landscape once again. This impressive scenery has often been used as the natural setting for many a Hollywood movie. There are also a number of tiny scattered settlements here. Life in this region is harsh, but the local inhabitants approach it with strength and perseverance. The villages may not appear to be as alluring as the rest of the scenery, but what makes them attractive is their special atmosphere. The interior of the church is very simple. This is in stark contrast to the large cathedrals in the cities. The former missions and monasteries are modestly furnished. In the mountains, far from civilization, there are still several Indian tribes. Hunting dominates the daily life of the Indians, as in bygone times the meat is hung up to dry and also to preserve it. Alexander of Humboldt was fascinated by El Golfo de California and its contrasting deserts, arid mountain regions and lush vegetation. A wonderfully remote landscape whose unique beauty captures the imagination of all who experience it. <laughs> 